Um, this is um, follow up to um, John's um, recording. Um, this is the Q and A. So if anybody's got some um, questions and that for me, or John and I will be glad to um, try and answer them for you. Is this in preparation for Nasara? Nothing to do with it. The, the, the common law introduction. No, Nasara and Jasara is you, you're, you're looking at the, um, the legal realm. Magna Carta doesn't sit in the legal realm. It's in the lawful realm, natural law. Anything that doesn't exist in nature um, is an illusion. That's uh, how I look at it. Aren't we going back to common law? We've already, the common law is, like I said, has existed back in Hellenic times, right? Which is do no harm, cause no loss, yeah. commit no fraud and keep the peace. Okay. There's no Nisara or Jisara. That's all been, that's, in my opinion, it's all an invention. It's all an illusion doesn't exist in nature, it's an illusion. If you got transported out in the middle of nowhere, what good is it? It's you, you look at it like gravity. You know that if you walk up to a cliff, you know gravity, if you step off, you're in big trouble. Because it is. All that other stuff, all, all man's law, legal, again, is also known as anti-law or going against God's law, or there's another word called Satan's law. That's how it, another way of looking at it. Yeah. It's all man-made, it's all temporary. So when the Reserve Bank goes... You're, you're still talking about in the legal realm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You get what, what I'm saying, I know it gets, it gets confusing for some people, that's why John put up lawful and legal. Lawful is permanent. It can't be changed, it's, as exists in nature. Right? Legal is man-made, which means it's temporary. Anything that's written down by man is temporary. It doesn't exist in nature. We want to go back to the proper law, like our ancestors did. So that basically means a trial by jury yes. system. So, so most, most of us have been living under the legal system. Correct. <laughs> you've got to understand with, it. With, without any choice about it. Uh, correct. Well, you've been conditioned, see, we've all been conditioned for hundreds of years mm -hmm. like this. Like John was saying early, earlier, they've been trying to do, um, to hide it all for 800 odd years since Magna Carta yeah. was invented. And they're just doing it slowly but slowly. And it's like John was saying before, what these people do is they'll push right up mm -hmm. to the very edge until people get angry and then they'll back off. Yeah. And then I'll come again, but I'll push a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And so forth until there's nothing left. You, you know yourself that it's, it's not right, but see, the problem is, it's about 30% of the people are awake, right? And 10% of those people um, won't do, are the only ones who will do something about it. All the rest will sit on the fence and let someone else do it. Right? What we're trying to do is trying to educate people so um, they understand what their inane rights are. Yeah, their yeah. rights aren't given. You're born with them. Get a few part of natural law. Yeah. And so the thing that, um, and we can come in here a bit, uh, with, with David Robinson, what he did when he designed, devised these notices, sorry, to, um, uh, which we send to people who are making unlawful demands on us, like if we, we might get a parking fine from the council, or the, it could even be a, a, a utility bill, like the electricity or water bill. Right. These are public resources, but they've been treasonously provided into the hands of private corporations who are making a profit from it. That is, uh, that's unlawful. So some people will actually refuse to pay those, as according to uh, the directions in Article 61. If we get an unlawful demand, it might be a fine or it could be a bill like that, and we put them on notice. We send them a notice saying, look, it's my understanding, uh, we don't get belligerent about it, we don't say, oh, I'm not going to do that. We say, it's my understanding that the, the law is that Article 61 of Magna Carta was invoked on the 23rd of March 2001, and that at that time, all Crown authority was suspended throughout the Commonwealth. So, uh, if that's the case, um, where's your authority for making this demand? If you can prove that I'm wrong, that Article 61 was not invoked, 
Well then, of course, I'll comply with your demands. And that's the first notice that we send. And we, there's a whole pile of evidence with it proving that Article 61 was actually invoked. And uh, they might uh, ignore that. They normally ignore it. Sometimes they'll send a letter saying, oh no, you still got to do what we say. Uh, that doesn't apply anymore. So we have to rebut those type of letters. We, when someone makes a claim to do with law, it has to be, uh, if it stands unrebutted, it gets accepted as a fact in law in any sort of subsequent proceedings. So we reinforce those notices with a series of, we give them a couple of more chances to uh, answer it and to, to prove that we're mistaken. Uh, and if they don't do that, then we let them know, well, you're, uh, now you've been informed about this treason taking place, you're actually aiding and abetting it, so we put, put, give them a notice for that. And finally, we tell them to stop what they're doing, if they're still making the demands. And of course, they usually become quite threatening. Um, they'll threaten various actions. Um, and it's up to each individual whether we comply under duress with that or whether we go all the way down the line and just say, no, I'm sorry, that's the law. The law forbids me to do what you're saying. So that's the, that's the basic structure of what we're trying to do. Let people know what these notices are. There's, you, you, you swear an oath to the Constitution. You transfer our allegiance away from the Crown to the Constitution until such time as the Crown comes back in line with what it's supposed to be doing. And uh, that's the basis of what we're doing. We swear an oath to the Constitution and we explain how all that's done. That's too much to go into in a presentation like this. That's all follow-up stuff. This is just an introduction. So, sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine. Just to um, help you a little bit more, on one of these links here is a guy called Mark Pazio. And he gets right into He's got lectures on video that go through a number of hours. And he, he explains natural law right down to a T. Um, this guy, Mark Pazio, used to be a satanic priest. And he was involved with the this for, um, for years and it took him, what do you say, about eight or nine years for him to get out of it. He knows all about it and he's very, very good in explaining it all to you. It's you like, pay taxes, rates now? Some of the people in the group don't. Yeah, it all is up to each individual. The, the, the thing being is... We've got members who don't pay their rates. The, the, the simple fact I is... The simple fact is they control the guns. Yeah, that's right. Until you get a ground slab swell of people that says no, or turn your back onto it and walk away, um, this is where we're at. I see on Telegram, um, mainly in America, where they're exercising their sovereignty rights. Uh, you know, a cop pulls them over you know, and all that kind of stuff. Is that associated? Uh, birth certificates and that kind of stuff. Well, they're again, uh, they're again you've, you've heard of Justonian. He was a, in, a, a, the, an old. Um, Roman Emperor. He was the one who invented the uh, Roman law, maritime law, and it's been used basically since, I guess, Magna Carta time. That's our court system now. Yeah. yeah. And, at the, and it's like I said, it's, it's all man, it's invented, it's an illusion. But the thing being, we've all been um, conditioned to believe it, mm -hmm. and it's, it's all an illusion. And this is the thing is to wake people up so they understand that because they naturally, when you talk to people, they get confused between lawful and legal all the time. That's why it's very important to understand what the difference is. Yeah. When we do the oath that I mentioned just now, that immediately cuts all ties with the legal system. So you step out. It yeah. takes it outside of that jurisdiction that you're swearing to the Constitution and there's nothing to do with the legalese system after that. Now, they can only threaten to enforce you, you know, at the point of a gun. Uh, and some people have been very successful in resisting that. It's up to each individual, however. Say in a family, you might have a situation where uh, one of the spouses understands a lot more about this than the other one. And let's say there's a parking fine. And, you know, it's 120 bucks or something like that if they haven't paid it the first time. Um, the one person who understands it might say, well, look, I've done my oath, I'm sending the notices to the council. Uh, and meanwhile, the council's ramping up their threats and they're just going to send it to the fine enforcement registry and so on. And the other spouse says, um, look, why don't you just pay this, you know? Uh, it's causing 
we don't want police knocking on the door or bailiffs and that sort of thing. And it's got the potential to cause a lot of discord within a home. And that is obviously seriously damaging. More seriously damaging to a person than paying $120 for home. So it's up to that person to decide which way they want to do it, which way they want to play it. If they comply under duress because they've been threatened with you know, really serious harm, well then no one in no one in in this group would condemn them for that. It's not anybody else's position. We're all equal under the law, so it's nobody's position to judge somebody else or tell them what to do. Right. The, the other thing too is this if you pay under duress, right, and you have a record of it, eventually they are gonna to have to answer for it and you claim it all back, plus damages. When yeah. enough people understand what what this process is and sworn their oath to the Constitution and cease to comply according to the instructions given in Article 61, then that system will start to crumble, will start to devolve because it will run short of revenue. And once you lose the support of the people, even despots like Ceausescu in Romania, people like that, even really hardline despots, eventually crumble when they lose the people. So that's the point we've got to be working towards. So Getting to that advice, critical point. What's your advice right now? Education. So yeah, education. Learn as much as you can about this, do your oath and start sending the notices. You can send the notices to people even if they haven't made a demand. We notify yeah. the councils, the yeah. police stations and the courts that we're under this standing, standing under the Article 61 and that they're not to bother us in future. Uh, of course, sometimes they still might, but we let them know we need a, a critical number of people to do that. It's probably going to be around about 25 or 30 percent of people. If 25 or 30 percent of the adult population notified the government, hey, you know, we I understand you don't have any authority. We're just not going to comply anymore. Um, those 25 percent of people will influence a lot of other people in the community. You've got to understand, like when the Nazis in the World War Two. They delivery went out to people who had backbones. Because mm. once they got rid of them, all the rest of it would follow. But always remember what I said, there's a lot of people out there sitting on the fence. Yeah. They need some people with a the backbone to stand up because you'd be surprised when you stand up, other people will stand up. Mm. And it, it only takes that critical mass and it's all over. But this is what we're trying to do. The more knowledge you have, the more understanding um, you'll get it. You'll understand. I've yeah. gone on to peacekeepers. Org UK and just got just starting all their free training, you know, like the mind is the most powerful and all the stuff you've been talking about. Next next move, I want to know. So education going through all of this, understanding the Magna Carta, twelve fifteen. There's a lot of links here that yeah. will take you to different places, yep. but it depends because um, we're I'm sort of more into hermetic principles, you know. And that basically says there the seven main principles, somatic system, mentalism, um, correspondence, um, vibration, um, cause and effect, gender, and I think that the founder, the last one is called care. And basically, when you care about what you're doing, things will change. Yeah. It's, these are ancient principles. These go way back before the Bible and the whole, whole shebang. You know, he's, this Hermes, he created alchemy, astrology, everyone's just stolen his ideas. So not, there's lots of links on there. Yeah. Um, one of them would be to the uh, YouTube channel. The, my YouTube channel's got yeah. over 60 videos uh, explaining all about this in much more detail. Yeah. So obviously we're just skimming over the surface here, just giving you a, a very basic background. We're, we've all been in the same position. I, yeah. When I first got into it, I just didn't know. But just over time to learn, yeah. read, and yeah. everything's becoming clear. I've only been doing this for about a year, so I've got a long way to go. Yeah. Thank you. The letters you've been sending to the councils and police stations, have you had any replies of these um, questions? I can answer that, John. I yeah, just, go on I, ahead. Because I'm in um, Melbourne, Shire, yep. and I sent them without um, any cause to them, and I, uh, I, got to, I got to the guy there, and he got his lawyers to start sending me nasty letters. So I just rebut them all and start sending in the notices and it all went away. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
I had a problem when I was, um, remember when COVID was going, the TGA banned uh, ivermectin. There were reports yeah. that people were having great success with prescribing ivermectin. I was importing ivermectin and a couple of shipments were impounded and I got notices from the TGA that I had to provide a doctor's prescription to show that I was authorised to import these this dangerous drug. Um, so I put I replied with the notices and uh, I got a letter back saying, uh, oh no, well we there's a don't sort of article Magna Carta that doesn't really apply anymore. So I sent them a really lengthy letter which was formed one of the videos on the series yeah. um, saying that you need to be educated about it was free lawful and legal. You're telling me I'm acting unlawfully. I'm not. I'm acting lawfully. You're acting legally and unlawfully. And I sent them this big explanation. Uh, I demanded the return of my tablets, which still haven't been returned, of course, because the, the TJ didn't have them. But they went quiet after I did that. I sent them the full set of notices. I never heard any more from them. The next thing I got was a couple of notices from the Australian Border Force. They're the ones who actually nabbed the tablets. And they demanded that I fill in this form on their website to show that it was a mistake that they shouldn't have done that or else they would be, they were statutorily obliged to commence a court proceedings to determine whether their action was uh, valid. So there was no name or anything. These were completely unlawful instruments that they were sending. No name, no physical address. Um, so I sent a letter to Dwayne Freeman, the Deputy uh, Commissioner of the Australian Border Force, and saying, your, your people are sending out these things that are unlawful. Um, you need to instruct them to behave lawfully. And by the way, here's the first notice. Um, you know, you, you actually don't have any authority to do this unless you can prove that you do. I don't have to do anything you say. Uh, send him all five notices, never heard a word. Um, that was more than a year ago, and I've heard nothing from either of them. So if they really had that authority that they claim, well, why wouldn't they have just said, let's send a group of feds around to this guy's place and make an example of him, you know? It's, they're not going to turn um, around and say, yeah, you won. Customs they're not gonna do or that. border forces, it's up to their discretion if they want to enforce the law. That's right. That's right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so they never they say, they never send you a letter yeah. saying, oh, you win. Yeah. They just go yeah. quiet. Right? Yeah. You don't know what the reason is, but you know, you have to surmise. Um, sometimes they'll just keep going. If it's a state thing, for example, they might, you know, let's say it's a traffic offence, they might threaten to cancel your licence. They might even cancel your driving licence. Um, there are members who have done that and they had their licence cancelled they just keep driving because there isn't any authority, no one in the country has got authority to grant you a licence to travel or to withhold that. But of course they could still hassle you if you're driving and you get stopped for something they ask to see your licence you don't have one. So it's up to each individual how far they want to go with that licence and all that type of thing is, is still part of the legal realm. The legal yeah, it's all, yeah, it's all yeah. legalities. Nothing to do with if you're, if you're um, in your private car, in your private business, if you're working, then you're, you're liable to it. But in your private thing, you're not. But when you get a licence, it means lie, no sense. Yeah. You know? Registration means that it's not your car anymore. As soon as you register it, it belongs to the government. It's just all these little things. All words, all their wording, is there's two dictionaries, the Black Law and there's the English Dictionary. And when you when you go into their legal realm, a lot of the words are different. Like government, it means mind control. The one the citizen means a slave. It was also long as you didn't do property harm. What was up with this for them? Yeah, you don't do any harm. No, commit no fraud. Yeah, fraud. And uh, keep the peace. Yeah. yeah, they're the four things that we're all obliged to do. Yeah. And that's all we're obliged to You're, you're born, yeah. and in nature you're born with all that. As long as yeah. you don't harm anybody, yeah. mm. you instinctively know what is right mm. is wrong. I, you, mm. you don't need the government to tell you that. Mm. But a lot of people um, don't want to take responsibility. This is the reason why we're in this mess. Mm. And natural law, if you don't obey natural law, um, you, uh, you incur a karmic debt. Mm. Yeah, you wind up in trouble worse from, for not speaking out and standing against evil the punish the what the consequence for that is worse than standing no decision up. is a decision it's like in the long run. Integrity, isn't it? 
Yeah, mm. it's all the principle of you know, you know, you know in your soul mm. what's it's right integrity. and wrong. Self integrity. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's all part of the eighth principle, care. Mm. So we urge people to you know find out about it, do their oath. We'll help them do that. Um, it's a very simple process, and how to send the notices. We we've got videos instructing people how to do all that. And then we, we have little meetings where we get together with uh, each other and help each other out. There's telegram groups where there's hundreds of people that can, you can go on there and ask a question. Someone will answer it for you. Um, it's all done in that way. Uh, it's all voluntary. The real thing to understand is that we're all equal before the law. And uh, that's, once we get our, that in our mind, then everything else for uh, what's our relationship with the police then? It, it all clarifies once you realise, unless they're acting under their constable's oath, they're just the same as us. They've got no authority to tell us what to do any more than we have to tell them what to do. And if they do, they're acting unlawfully. Um, and they, we can record all that and eventually when the trial by jury system is re-established, when enough people accept, the law for what it is, the actual law, not just the legislation, well then uh, we can change things and the trial right jury system will come back in and these people will have to answer for what they've done. Can it run in the beginning side by side with the legal system? Like will you see your system? If, if it was all to change tomorrow, it, it'd have to be some sort of... Um, to fill yeah. it. Right, okay. So if you bum trial by jury in there and got people to understand common law, natural law, and put that straight in, um, you would... You know, it'll gradually. You, you basically don't need any legislation or laws when you look at it, right? There's some good ones in there, but people can determine that, and the jury. That's what the jury does. This is um, with elections and stuff like that. You're they've got it sewn up. You you you're it's the same thing on different sides of the same coin. You, there is no choice. It's an illusion. Mm -hmm. The whole lot's an illusion. Referenda, the whole lot. If you if you um, if you vote. Or in, the, in any elections, you're given a credibility. Yeah, you're you're, even if it you say yes, it's no. You're still agreeing to it. That's what I get back to an illusion. You've got to turn your back on it. A lot of people. It's very hard for a lot of people to grasp that. Would would um, they're suggesting the the uh, the jabs uh, the stuff in the jabs change people's DNA? Consequ well, look, there's a lot of... Consequently, they're, they're no longer of nature. Well, the, the thing being is that there's a lot of backwards and forwards about this. There was an um, article I was reading that Pfizer says that their um, testing drug is different from what they handed out. That was just... I just was listening to that today. But to answer your question, they're still a living being. Yeah, yeah but no, no longer what's considered natural. Yeah, well, they're, they're still a living being. They've they been... Um, uh, Victimised or yeah, being yeah, done. Oh, yeah. No, exactly right. But but um, what I'm saying is is um, under their law, <laughs> um, good people with changed DNA are no longer natural. They be painted, painted. Therefore, um, no longer eligible to come under natural law. Well, the, the other thing too is um, if what, been, what about morality? Yeah. What's right and what's wrong. Yeah. Right. We, we all know. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying is when you talk about natural law, um, morality, uh, principles. When you narrow it right down to one word, it means true, mm. truth. Right? You know it's right or wrong or whatever. I don't have to tell you. You wouldn't be here if you didn't have a few clues. There's a lot yeah. of information about various controversies. You know, the Sarah Jasara. Uh, the, uh, whether this humanism, transhumanism and so on is a real thing. I'm not qualified enough to know, uh, I'm not an expert in either of those things, um, but I stick to the principle of, uh, once you've got a principle in your mind, it's clear what to do. There is natural law, which is the law that we're supposed to live under, that has been applied, and then there's this artificial legalistic law. And once you understand the principle the natural law overrides that, then a lot of the questions that come up in your mind 
get sorted out. You think, okay, well, this is what I've got to do, and that's going to get sorted later. Okay. Um, we're getting close now to the end. Is there anybody yeah, else any, want any more questions? Question? Yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.